Most freelancers out there are glorified employees. However, there is a way to utilize freelancing to get rich. The only way you're going to do that is if you have multiple sources of income. So in today's video, that's what we're gonna be focused on. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dylan Madden. I, over the last five years, have been involved in freelancing and consulting. And in my former life, I literally went out there, changed trash cans, cleaned parking lots. So I went from, you could say, trash bags to money bags. And once I figured out some of the methods I share here on this channel, I went from struggling to find new clients to going from zero to six figures in a single year. Anyways, enough about me. Let's go ahead and jump in. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here are the four easy ways freelancers can build multiple income streams. And I want to make this clear. You can get rich as a freelancer. Where most people mess up is they don't understand that there are other ways to monetize. And so they get stuck into this employee mindset of, I'm going to work for this person, I'm gonna work for this person. They undersell themselves, they just go on and on and on, basically treating it like a job instead of a business. And so I wanna go ahead and just show you everything. There's gigs, retainers, affiliate marketing, and then consulting. These are four ways that you can create multiple streams of income. And so the first one is gigs. Now, what are gigs? Gigs are pretty much what most freelancers do. And what I mean is I'm going to do this one-off sales page. So the copywriters out there, I'm going to do the sales page. You're going to pay me a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. And then after that, well, great. Congratulations. Now you've got to find another client. Hopefully the boss man's going to give me more work, please. Or web designers, they go out there and they just do web design. And so they get paid a couple grand, five grand, it obviously depends on your skill level and the results that you get. But they're constantly like a hamster, a hamster wheel, just going and going and going and going. And as I said, that is no way to live. You don't want to quit a job and you're building a business, but you treat it like a job. Because if you treat it like a job, you're gonna get paid like a job. If you treat it like a business, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna get rich. And so gigs, are a helpful way in the very beginning to get some cash flow coming in. So you go out there, you find things that you can help people with and they pay you one off. Sometimes maybe they'll, you'll work with them on a monthly basis, meaning once a month you do one gig for them. But at that point, you're gonna need tons and tons of clients. I learned this the hard way. I had 12 different clients. Three of them were paying me retainers. And then the other clients were just once a month, twice a month, three times a month, four times a month, maybe, Sometimes there's more work, sometimes there's less. They're, hey, Dylan, could you help me with this? And so you're going to be stuck working basically a job if you stay in the gig quadrant. Now, why are they helpful? They're helpful for one main reason. They're an easy way to get paid. Super easy way to get paid. So if you're a web designer, you can go out there, you can find people that need a website you design a website for them, you get paid. If you're a copywriter, you can go out there and find people that need a better sales page or maybe they have an email list and you can write up a email sequence, like a welcome sequence for them. And so it's a super easy way to get some quick cash. Now the cons, as I already said, is you're basically working a job at that point and it's not consistent. Some months people are gonna need more work, other months they might not need anything from you. And so you're going to be stuck in this rabbit hole, this hamster wheel of constantly going out there and searching for new clients. And most of the freelancer gurus here on YouTube, that's what they teach you how to do. They teach you basically how to be a glorified employee versus me and what I do is I teach you how to build an actual business. Because <laughs> why quit a job when you're basically just getting another job? And this other job is less stable, doesn't come with benefits, doesn't come with any of the stuff that a normal job provides and you're constantly gonna have to be chasing. Instead, I would invite you to adopt my thinking, my thought processes, my methods, and go out there and just create an actual business, which leads us to retainers. And I absolutely love retainers and you are too. Now, what are retainers? Retainers are clients where you do consistent work for and they pay you on a monthly basis. So example, I've got a video editor and every single month I pay him. So he is consistent and predictable income. And then he delivers whatever it is. So the videos, the videos that he edits, he delivers that to me every single month that's his job that's his the service he's providing me with or example if you, the twitter ghostwriters out there if you you write x amount of tweets every single day maybe one or two threads a week and you do that 
four, so four weeks out of every month, and at the end of the month, or in some cases the beginning of the month, depending on what you organize with the client, they're gonna pay you a monthly retainer. They're gonna pay you $2,000 a month. Every single month they pay you 2,000, and then this is the work you do. And the reason I like retainers is, as I said earlier, when I had 12 clients, most of them were gigs. It wasn't predictable. I was working all the time and I wasn't really making any headway. So I cut all the clients down to the three that were paying me a retainer and then I started building back up with retainer only. And retainers are helpful because you know for a fact you have X amount of dollars coming in every single month. It gives you a, a sense of security, a sense of certainty when you're like, okay, I know for a fact I've got a solid four grand coming in every single month from retainers. I want to make seven, seven grand a month. Great. So now you just need to see these clients are paying me X amount of money each. How can I charge a little bit more? I can take on less clients, make more money. And as you can see, it's a very mathematical approach to getting to seven grand a month and then 10 grand a month, then 15 grand a month. And so and for any of my Europeans out there, when I say 15 grand, I mean $15,000. And so that's why they're so helpful is it provides you with predictable income, predictable income. Write that down. Retainers create predictable income. Now, the cons, as I already put here, is you have the tendency to undersell yourself. So you don't want to get caught up in this loop of I'm doing all of this work and I'm stuck charging X, Y, Z amount of money. Can't really grow. This, this happened to be. Whenever I got started, I was charging $1,000 a month for the service I was providing. And I was getting better and better results for my clients, but I kept getting paid $1,000 a month. And I kind of imposter syndrome, not gonna lie. I had imposter syndrome. I was like, well, it's so easy for me to do this. I am good at it, but it's so easy. I'm just gonna charge this new person a grand a month. So what you have to do is be a little bit more systematic in your approach. Once you, let's say you hit $4,000 a month, which is very easy, you're making $4,000 a month. And then you see the consistent results you're delivering for your client. Let's say you charge $1,000. Okay, well, great. Ask yourself, if I charge new clients 1,500, will I provide them with more like money or results than what they're paying me? If the answer is yes, then the new clients, you say, I charge 1,500. The other day, and I posted this inside of the social media and client acquisition campus, the other day I showed how from one client, I got paid $10,000. A couple days later, we were doing a live, I showed $4,100. And so it's not that they're paying me based off of what I think my service is worth. You have to operate from the perception of being results-based. What results are you delivering for the client? This is something that all these freelancing gurus on YouTube don't teach you. They don't understand. So you're, it's not the service itself. It's the results that you're getting them. And so the cons of a retainer are a lot of us have imposter syndrome. We end up underselling ourselves. When you undersell yourself, you're kind of just doing yourself a disservice and your clients because you're going to go in there being like, man, I want to make more money, but your money's not going up because you keep underselling yourself. So focus on whatever your clients are doing now, what, like how much they're paying you. Look at the results and be like, oh, results I'm getting them are worth way more than what I'm charging. So for the new clients that I take on, I am going to charge more. Now, the third way to have multiple sources of income as a freelancer is affiliate marketing. And I don't hear people talking about this. So I just want to give you some of this game. What is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing, put simply, is you don't have to create the product or the service or the software somebody else does. But whenever you tell somebody about it, if they click your link, you get a commission. And so it's very easy to add an additional two, three, four, five grand a month to your income just for talking about the tools that you use. So one thing that I do in my own business is whenever I refer my client, let's say that we're doing a consult and they want to start scheduling out content, I'll refer to them Hype Fury or any of the other scheduling softwares out there that we actually use, I'll refer them to that software with my link. They want a new newsletter. Well, I personally recommend ConvertKit. I'll send them my personal affiliate link for ConvertKit. So whatever software you're already using and that you like, and your client needs it, you can refer them to your affiliate link. So every single client, they're gonna have different needs. Maybe it's a new AI tool, an AI tool that you're going to show them how to implement into their business, great. You can get paid by most of these affiliate or AI softwares, you can get paid an affiliate link. Sometimes you're talking 20%, 30%, as low as 10% of the total sell. 
So let me just do a quick example right now. Let's say you get 20%. So what is 20% of, let's just say the software itself is on the low end of $75. It's $15. Look right here. $15 that you got paid from your client every single month in most cases. A lot of these, they pay you every single month that that person continues for the lifetime of them using it. You're going to add an additional $15 to your income. And you can implement affiliate marketing across your entire business. If your staff needs it, if your clients need it, if you're on social media, which you should be, once again, that's what I teach inside the SMCA. If you're on social media, you can refer people to various tools. Because I get asked questions all the time. Dylan, how do you schedule your tweets? I use this. Dylan, what do you use for banking? I use this. And then I get paid for that. And they're helpful because you like XYZ software, trust it, and you're basically saving time for your clients or for your audience. Because most people, they have to go, they have to do research. Is this tool worth XYZ? Let me look at the reviews. If you have a software that you've been using for a long time, as an example for Hype Fury, I've been using Hype Fury now for probably three or four years. I like them. There's certain things I want to improve with it, but all in all, it's a very good software. And so I refer people to that software. And so you're saving your clients time, which means you are providing value by referring them to the affiliate link for the software that they need. Now, when it comes to the cons, let's remove that. When it comes to the cons, there really aren't any outside of one thing. And I haven't had this happen to me in five years. I haven't had this issue happen since this one time, but I did have this blog I was running and I would refer people to this product. And I built up the entire blog around this one topic. And to make a long story short, they ended up changing their affiliate program. And I went from making 1,500 a month to absolutely zero. So there is potential with any of these affiliate tools out there, affiliate programs out there to where they'll change something. So you might go from making an additional 1,500 to zero. But like I said, I haven't had that happen since like five years ago. So it's been a while. The amount of people that I see sharing, oh, I use this tool, may as well get paid for it, bro. You may as well. Already promoting them, so you may as well get paid for doing so. Because you're helping out your clients, you're helping out your audience, and you can make a lot of money. Don't sit there and think, oh, well, I've only got five clients, or I've only got 10 clients. This isn't gonna be that much money. Bro, it's free money. Take it. Are you scared of making extra money? The answer is no. So get into affiliate marketing with your clients. Now, the fourth way, is consulting. Now, what is consulting? Consulting, put simply, is you have experience in a certain topic, copywriting, social media management, growing a social media account, systemizing sales, systemizing teams, web design, whatever, and people will pay you for your knowledge and experience without you having to do the quote unquote work. So as an example, just a couple weeks ago, a person paid me a grand, so $1,000 to sit down over lunch. So he paid me $1,000, we sat down here in Dubai, I just answered some questions. He had all these questions, we sat down, we were eating lunch, and I got paid $1,000 for that. Or people will be like, hey, how much for a call? I charge $800 for an hour virtual call. Obviously IRL is a little bit more expensive. But the virtual call, boom, that's a free $800. And so you can implement this into your own business. Now, the key takeaway with consulting that I want you to understand is don't because I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to do consulting because that means that I don't have to actually do the work. I can just tell them what they should do. The key thing is that you actually need to know what you're doing. You actually need to be able to get results for people. The consulting thing, don't even think about it. Focus right up here with gigs and retainers. But if you're super good at what you do and you can get results, people will pay you very good money for your time and experience. I've got years upon years upon years upon years upon years of experience with building social media brands all across the different social media platforms, monetizing your business on social media to email copywriting. So how can I increase sales with my, the emails I'm sending out to creating opt-in forms, lead gen, all, literally all that. I've got experience in that, years of it and getting results, not only for myself, but for my clients, my students, et cetera. So people will pay top dollar for that because you can give them seven years worth of experience in the course of an hour and cut through all the noise. The person I sat down with asked me very specific questions and I gave him answers that it would have taken him probably 
12 months, if not two years, to figure out on his own through trial and error. He asked me the question. I gave him the answer, gave him a game plan. Boom, he went out to the race. So that's why it is so helpful. Now, the cons, there's always cons. There's pros and cons to everything. The cons are you actually need to know what you're talking about. You don't want to ruin your reputation because you're like, oh, cool, I'm just going to do consulting instead of actually doing the work for people. They're, the only value you bring as a consultant is understanding how to get them from point A to point B. More importantly, I would even say from point A to point Z in a straight line without having to do trial and error, without wasting tons of money, without burning tons of time. You can show them, here's where you're at, here's wh how, or where you're gonna go. Let's remove this, remove this, remove this, boom. And then they go straight there. So that's really the only con when it comes to consulting. Outside of that, you can do it IRL. I've actually been noticing an increase in the amount of people that want IRL consulting. You can also do it virtually. So you can set up a Google Meet, you can set up a Zoom call, and you can do it virtually and still get paid very, very well for doing it. I encourage you to go and watch parts of this video again. That way you can actually take notes and then take action. Remember, just getting more and more videos is not the answer. You need to actually go out there and take action. However, I also, down in the description, have various resources that you can utilize to help you implement this into your business or if you're a total beginner, to go and start taking action on it. So I've got it for beginners all the way to business owners. Now, I only work with people who have actual businesses. However, I do have lots and lots of resources. If you are a total beginner, you're just getting started in freelancing, I've got you covered too. Take a look down in the description below and I will see you in the next video.